What's up, everybody? Paul here from Hashtag, cutting a very, very quick episode right before roster cuts on uh, the fact that the Bills are really, even though rosters are at 80 right now, the Bills are only going to have to say goodbye to 12 players. And here's how. With the rosters at 80, actually the Bills are at 81. Believe it or not, Christian Wade is seen as being on the commissioner's exempt list, which means that uh, he's allowed to be on the roster and the Bills can carry 81 players right now. Again, a little atypical, just a refresh on the rules. Typically rosters are at 90 and then they they make, uh, you know, they make a, a, a large scale cut down to their major rosters. But with all the rule changes this year, 90 man rosters went to 80 man rosters uh, and the Bills, as I just mentioned, have 81 because of Christian Wade. So when I said in the intro, the Bills only need to say goodbye to 12 players, here's what I mean. Of the 80 men on the roster, it is possible that only 12 will not be rostered by the Bills in 2020. And let me explain a little bit, because that number may uh, shock a lot of you. So let me just break this down. First off, your uh, active day roster is made up of 53 players. Okay, so you take uh, the Bills' 81 current players... Well, I mean, yeah, 81 current, but we'll do 81 because Christian Wade's on there. So the Bills, of their uh, current 81 players, you're going to be retaining 53 of them. Okay, so that leaves 28 players that you have to cut. Well, not necessarily, right? Don't forget that this year there's expanded practice squads, which means that you actually have 16 spots on your practice squad. Now, normally practice squad is reserved for players of under three accrued seasons, and I'll save everybody the headache of of discussing one in a crude season is just know that it's typically for players with not a lot of NFL experience. Okay. Normally the practice squad is made up of only 10 players, uh, of under three accrued seasons. Uh, that rule is still kind of in effect. Um, except for this year, they've added six spots where you can have, uh, beyond three years of accrued experience. And there's different slots for it, but just for the most part, just to keep things simple, they have 10 spots for, uh, players of, under three accrued seasons and six spots to use of players of over three accrued seasons. Um, so I'll give an example. Uh, a player like um, uh, Isaiah McKenzie, uh, he would qualify for one of the six spots above one of the one of the new six spots that are created. Uh, whereas a player like um, what would be a good example? Um, let me take a look at the roster real quick. A player like Cody Ford. Uh, he would have eligibility for the standard practice squad. Now, obviously, the Bills are not going to cut Cody Ford, but that is just an example of the level of experience that, that you're you're supposed to have. Okay, so you're going to go from 28 players, but now you have 16 practice squad spots. So, okay, well, let's subtract 16 from those 28. That's your 12 players. There's only 12 players on this roster who won't be there for the 2020 season. And that's really kind of amazing when you think about it. We talk about roster cuts all the time, and normally roster cuts happen when you have to create a lot of cap space and you're kind of positioning for your team this year and your team next year. Um, I don't really think the Bills are looking at next year with as critical an eye on the salary cap as uh, what a lot of people will talk about. So I'll just give you an example. Trent Murphy is just a perfect example. Trent Murphy is supposed to make $9.7 million against your salary cap this year. Okay, well, you drafted AJ Epinesa, so you're looking at replacing that. You signed Mario Addison, so again, you're looking at replacing that. Uh, but the Bills have often had a very diverse uh, rotation uh, across the defensive line. So keeping Trent Murphy isn't necessarily a bad thing. Yes, you save $7.5 million, I think, if you release him. Um, but at the same token, I think the Bills are looking at taking their shot this year. Right When you take a look at this defense, taking Trent Murphy out of it doesn't necessarily make them better. Um, does it give them more financial stability? I think there's an argument to be made there. But does it give them, does it give them the best team in the short term? Well, I'd rather have Trent Murphy on the team than, you know, have Daryl Johnson taking his spot, right? So if we're, if we're going to talk apples and apples, uh, I'm going to take Trent Murphy over Daryl Johnson, although I really like Daryl Johnson. Um, at the defensive end spot, I I'm more willing to take the product that Trent Murphy gives me, even though it's going to cost me significantly more money. All right, so let's talk about those 16 practice squad spots and the 12 spots of players who won't be with the Bills uh, in a couple days. So those 16 practice squad spots, six of them are made up of players who uh, likely will be ha will have to be cut. 
Um, so again, let me just explain. If you have under four years of experience in the NFL, if you have under four seasons, you have to go through the waiver process. And what that means is uh, a team says, okay, we don't want this player anymore. And they put them basically on a transaction line and any team can pick them up, but they have to be added to their 53 man roster. So let's just use Robert Foster as an example. Let's say the Bills waive Robert Foster. Any team can say, we want Robert Foster, we'll pick up his current contract, but they have to add him to their 53-man roster. Your practice squad used to be primarily and, and only made up of guys like that. Those were the types of players that were on your practice squad, players that cleared waivers, no team touched them, and then they were signed to your practice squad. That's how you get players on your practice squad. Now those six additional spots, those may be made up of players who do not have to go through waivers. We'll just use Trent Murphy just as an example, okay? If Trent Murphy were to be cut and no team in the NFL signed him, he could sign with the Bills at the practice squad spot. Now, the practice squad pays significantly less money. I mean, we're talking like a hundred, I think it's it's under $200,000 for the season, which is like a third of, of like the rookie salary, right? So um, the, the salary is way, way, way low. Um, and the practice squad is protected this year quite a bit. The rules are different. There was an episode cut earlier this week explaining the practice squad stuff. So if you're curious about all the new rules there, uh, the new additions to the injured reserve rule, all that, there's a lot of cool stuff. You're going to want to go check out that video. Um, I'll add a card up here, I think is where it is. Mario always points. I don't know where it is. Um, but long story short, once you start doing the math, you realize there's only 12 players that uh, could reasonably have to walk away from Buffalo and not put on a helmet for the Bills. And that's a crazy number when you figure that there's 81 players currently in the building. That's how big rosters are right now. The practice squads have been expanded because they want to have players at the ready in case you know players start testing positive on the 53-man roster. Uh, all these things are big-time changes. So when you start talking about roster cuts, I don't think this year is going to be as exciting as other years. For several reasons. One, the Bills have plenty of salary cap space, so I don't really think they're too worried about what's going to happen next year, right? They've got a lot of salary cap space right now. Teams that start cutting named players are teams that are already close to the cap and are looking and having problems the following year, right? I don't think the Bills are going to fall into that category because, again, they like to have that veteran rotation, and they're not really committed to a lot of people super long term. So, the, the idea that the Bills are going to have a very active cut down day, I think it's going to be a lot of players that you're going to see players that you like waived with the intent of putting them on the practice squad. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, well, Paul, the Bills have a great roster. Most of these guys are going to get picked up. Not necessarily true. Remember, if a player is going to get picked up off the waiver process, so let's just use Levi Wallace as an example, right? The Bills would have to waive Levi Wallace. Levi Wallace would be an example of a player who would be likely picked up by another team because he is likely better than one of their 53-man rostered cornerbacks. But if we're going to talk about a player uh, like uh, Terrell Dodson, it is likely that no team is going to pick him up because he missed last season. He did run into a suspension. Um, so the odds that he ends up on somebody else's 53-man roster are a little bit thinner. So that's a player you could see waived and then added to the practice squad after that waiver period ends. So again, I, I want to point out, there's a lot of players on this roster, 81 of them, right? 53 get to stay on the roster. A player like Christian Wade, and let's just talk about him just for a moment. Christian Wade last year was able to be added to the practice squad, and it didn't count as one of those 10 spots. That that He doesn't have that ability anymore. He's currently exempt from the preseason roster, right? But once the Bills have to make roster cuts, that's where Christian Wade uh, will either have to either make the roster or he'd have to clear waivers just like any other player. So after this preseason, once these roster cuts happen, he's treated just like a normal player. And that brings me to the last point. And, and Greg Thompson uh, from Cover One had made a great point on Twitter talking about injured reserve. So everybody who wanted to see Voshan Joseph last year at the end of the season, we all know he came down with a shoulder injury in the preseason. And then, you know, as the season wore on, uh, Voshan was healthy and just kind of thought you'd see him come back because he was on injured reserve reserve. Um, and again, the rules for injured reserve are a little bit different this year. Again, check out that video that I put in the card earlier. Or I'll leave it in the description as well. Um, but the rules for injured reserve are different this year. But the rule that's not different is if you get put on the injured reserve 
prior to declaring your 53-man roster. That rule has stayed, so let me explain. We use John Feliciano as a great example. Greg did on Twitter, and again, thank you, Greg, for calling us out. It's a huge point. If the Bills were to put uh, John Feliciano on injured reserve before declaring their 53-man roster, then he is done for the year, okay? He is finished for the season. And that's what happened to Voshan last year. Voshan got put on the injured reserve roster prior to the 53-man roster being declared. So you will see John Feliciano make the 53-man roster. You'll then subsequently see him have to be put on injured reserve, and the Bills will bring in another player, either a player that they cut or re-sign a player that they had waived. Guys, lots of players here on the Bills roster, and a vast majority of them are going to be staying. The only difference, you're going to have 12 guys who won't be popping on a helmet for the Bills that are currently in the building right now. Paul here from Hashtag Sports. Have a good one, everybody.